Welcome back. President Biden will host the leaders of Japan and the Philippines this week in a bid to boost economic and defense ties. Japan's prime minister will stop by the White House this evening ahead of tomorrow's official visit and state dinner. He's also expected to become just the second Japanese leader to address a joint session of Congress. Joining us now with more on this is CBS News senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe. Ed, good morning. Uh, this visit we know comes after President Biden just last month had said he opposed the planned sale of Pittsburgh-based U.S. steel to Japan's Nippon Steel. Is the president expected to address that issue during this visit? Oh, it may come up, Chanel, but obviously not necessarily set to dominate the conversations. This is very much a summit designed to reinforce the U.S.-Japanese relationship at all levels, but especially on this visit at the military level. We're expected to learn a lot more in the coming days about the growing, fortified U.S.-Japanese military partnership, of course, at a time of great tension there in the Indo-Pacific with China continuing to keep its eye on Taiwan and fears uh, from U.S. allies like South Korea and Japan that that Chinese aggression could uh, could intensify in the coming years. So expect to hear a lot more in that realm as well as, as other commercial aspects, but not necessarily the steel situation. Uh, a, a massive corporate deal if it comes through. The president expressing concern about U.S. goods essentially being controlled by a foreign entity. The Japanese, though, understand, and I think it's pretty obvious, that we're in the midst of an election year where issues like uh, domestic control of major industries is likely to be a factor, at least for voters in places like Pittsburgh, where U.S. Steel is based. So uh, perhaps the Japanese understand this is what the president's got to do and say, at least for now. And Ed, we know 40 Democrats on Capitol Hill have so far signed a letter calling on the U.S. to halt weapons transfers to Israel. One of those, Wisconsin Representative Mark Pocan, spoke to Nancy Cortez on America Decides yesterday, calling for a split with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. I think it's time for a divorce with Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, we can support the Israeli people as we should. We can support the Palestinian people. But just because some political leaders uh, are not executing things in a way that I think my constituents in Wisconsin think is humane, uh, it means something. And I think the president absolutely understands that. So, Ed, given this conversation, how much pressure is the White House feeling right now to take a tougher stance here? They're continuing to face a lot of pressure from fellow Democrats, not only in Congress, but voters across the country. Whether there would ever be a formal split between the Biden administration and Netanyahu's coalition government remains to be seen. Remember, he has been pretty steadfast in his support of the Israelis since the October 7th attack. And when he was asked last week whether, the, whether he still stands by Israel, he dismissed the question from a reporter asking, is that even a serious question? This is a president who's had decades of support and relationship with the Israeli people, with various Israeli leaders, and is someone that can sort of see beyond the Netanyahu government, which is why these continuing visits by various members of the Netanyahu war cabinet here to Washington are so intriguing. Uh, the, the latest uh, visitor meeting today with some Senate leaders met yesterday with the National Security Advisor. No plans yet, at least, for him to meet with President Biden, uh, but a sign that the United States at least continues to engage other members of that government just in case it falls apart in the coming months amid domestic Israeli political pressure. All right, Ed O'Keefe, thank you.